computer property, which is going to be 9y plus 5x. Is that a true statement? Can you do that? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What about here? So commutative property of multiplication, does it matter what order you multiply in? No. So in this case, you could change it to 7 times negative 5. I'm just putting in parentheses just to keep that minus sign away from the minus times. Commutative is the order, the order of the operation. You just get 0. Yeah. Ready? <laughs> Inverse property and... When you multiply, what do you get, though? You don't get zero, right? What do you get? One. Mm -hmm. When you multiply by something's inverse, you get one. When you add something's inverse, you get zero. The additive inverse is not the same as the multiplicative inverse. Like, for example, here, negative 9 eighths. What's the additive inverse of negative 9 eighths? Positive 9 eighths. So if you, that would be another, that would be additive inverse right there. Chapter 1 test. Any questions from here? Yes? From the sort of 2 through 5. 2 through 5? It says, let's say, uh, you're gonna say, list the elements. So I asked you a question like this, right? So you have to decide which sets they belong to. And can something belong to more than one set? Yes, they can. Remember those sets, are in, they go inside each other? So this one right here. What did I ask you to do first? Oh, does that question look familiar? It's pretty much identical. I just picked a different set, right? So it at first, first of all, some of you did never did this. You have to simplify, simplify the numbers. It's the first word, simplify, right? So what's the square root of 25? Five. Five. Are there any other ones? Oh, what's 24 over 2? 12, right? And I, I have not asked. You can take away the square root of negative 4. I'm not going to ask you about imaginary numbers right there. Um, but you can do all the other ones. So where are the whole, what are whole numbers? Can someone just list for me what the whole numbers are? What? No, no. So let's just like, let's make a so um, yes, uh, we can go through one by one. But if I wanted to write the list of all whole numbers, what's the smallest whole number? Zero. One, two, three, and so forth. Right? What's the smaller set though? Do you remember there was a smaller set right here? It's not up there, but it's the natural numbers. Remember? Yeah. So those are one, two, three. What's the only difference between the naturals and the wholes? No zero. And what are integers? Well, 0, 1, 2, like that, right? And then rational numbers, any what? Anything that can be a what? Fraction. And an irrational number, something that can't. So what are the whole numbers here? Which ones are the whole numbers? <coughs> 0 is a whole number, right? 0 is in that list. 3. So 5, you're supposed to simplify first. 12. 12. Are there any others? No. Nope. And then it asks for integers. So integers, what can I add into that set? Negative 1. Negative 1. Is there anything else I can add in? No. Nope. But you just got to have, th these are also integers, right? What about rational numbers? Which ones are rational? They can be written as fractions. All of these. Can, can 3 be written as a fraction? 3 over 1. So it's all of the integers plus anything else that's also a fraction. Fractions, you can't, 1 half isn't an integer. Negative 1 half isn't. So it's going to be all these numbers plus what? Negative 1 is there. What about negative 0.5? Mm-hmm. Any others? 0, 3, 5, 7.5, 12. And then, what are the real numbers? All of them. I took away this one. This one's an imagine. This was the square root of negative four, which is imaginary. We haven't talked about those, so I'm not adding them again. But you have to list them. You have to know what the sets are. You have to know the sets. So the key thing is, can one thing be in multiple sets? Because remember, remember that diagram we had. We had natural <coughs> numbers, right? And then you add in zero, and you get the whole numbers. And then what was the bigger one? Integers. Integers, and then what was around integers? Rational numbers, right? And then what was over here? Irrational numbers. And if you add the irrational and rational numbers, what's this whole set called right here? The real numbers, exactly. They are called the real numbers. Very good. And then what are not real numbers? I mentioned them just now. Imaginary numbers? Yeah. The square root of negative 2, the square root of negative 3, the square root of negative 4. So. Okay, positive when a is greater than zero. It's not real when a is less than zero, and it's zero when a is equal to zero. Because in this case, you'd have something like the square root of negative four, which is imaginary. 
We have not talked about that, but we will. That's why it's not real, because it's imaginary. You should target on this one. The parentheses, right? And the parentheses on the inside. So what's the what's the parentheses on the inside you should target? Put in red here. What's negative one minus two? Negative three. So at this point, you can also simplify a little. What's the square root of nine? Three. So if you simplify this, you end up with negative two, negative three minus what? Negative three plus two all over three times negative three minus negative two. Like that? Ah, uh, did you make? I tried to distribute the negative sign. You could. You could. You can distribute the negative sign if you want. It comes out to the same thing because you're going to end up with negative two, negative three plus three plus two all over negative nine plus what? What's this? Plus what? Plus two. Plus two. Thank you. So then you have those brackets right there. You could do what's inside these right here. Can you see that yellow? Ish. What does that come out to be? What's negative three plus three plus two? Two. Yeah, exactly. Good. Make more space for you here. Do more. Good. So what does it become? It becomes negative two times two over negative what? So you end up with negative four over negative seven. So what's the answer? What's the answer? Four over seven. Four over seven. Excellent. Nice. Okay, so why don't you guys... So when you do this out, you end up with negative 20 over negative 20. So what does that equal? One. So your numerator is one. Your numerator is one. On the bottom here, you need to be careful. The, let's do the easy one right here. That's going to be negative 3 times 8 plus 1. What's negative 3 times 8? So you have negative 24 plus 1. This is negative. So this is equal to over negative 23. This one, by far, what I'm seeing, by far, this one is by far the one that people are messing up the most. So let's do it separately, right here. If I do this one, I don't know why I went that big. If I do this one right here, if I can get it to move over, it just won't. Okay, we're going to keep you there then, fine. Uh, you need to make sure you remember the order of operations and copy it down correctly. What's 8 times 4? 32. So you have 32. What's 3 squared? 9, Nine times 5 minus 2, two times negative 1. Do, just do it piece by piece. What operations do you do first? Okay, Robert, yeah. I would distribute the 2 to the negative 1. Yeah, so you get plus what? Plus 2. Plus two. Plus two. What's 9 times 5? 45. 45. And what, oh, 32. What's 32 minus 45? Okay. Negative 13. Plus 2 is? Negative 11. So this one comes out to be? negative 11. You put this together, you have 1 over 11 over 23. When you divide by a fraction, that's the same thing as what? Uh, decimal. Multiplying by the reciprocal. reciprocal. So this is equal to 1 times 23 over 11. So what is that? 23 over 11. Translation so, matrix to go through? We have, you have worked with equations before because you've dealt with the equal sign. We talked about this a few days ago. All an equation is is something with the equal sign. That's it. That's it. So when you have an equation, you have different things you can do to the equation to solve the equation. Solving the equation is finding a value or values that make the equation true. But sometimes you're not going to be given the equation. What are you going to be given? No yeah. corrections now, please. I'm not. I'm just labeling it. Okay. 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 Just checking. You need to actually build the equation sometimes. So sometimes instead of being given the equation, what are you going to be given? A whole set of words in the form of like a word problem or something that's told to you. And the first step is going to be making the equation, and then you're going to solve it. The key thing to remember, just like remember the big fraction we just worked on that's all on the over here, the key thing to remember is don't try to do it all at once. You do it piece by piece. If you try to do it all at once, really small things are going to cause really big problems. So here's some basic transition makers. The sum of a number in 7, oh, that number is going to be x, and you add it to 7. Another way to say that, 6 more than a number, that's x plus 6. 
3 plus a number, 24 added to a number, a number increased by 5. These are all different ways just to say add things together. That's all it is. Subtraction, is subtraction going to be any different? No. What about multiplication? No, there's just different ways to say the same thing. 16 times a number. In this case, x is that number. 3 fourths as much as a number, that's times. Twice, two times a number, the product of two numbers. These are all phrases that you will see in, uh, in what are you looking for? The width and the length. So you might be working with how many variables? Two. Find, what are you trying to find? Excellent. So one of the first things you do after you understand the problem is you figure out what you are trying to give for an answer. You're trying to give a length and a width. So your answer might look like, oh, the length is this and the width is this. So let's look at the first sentence. Let's look at the first sentence. So we'll call, let's say length is L and width is W. The length of a rectangle is one more than twice the width. So everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. The length of a rectangle, L, is, so equals, one more than what? X. Two times the width. What does that say? The length is one more than two times the width. That's what we have. What about the second sentence? The perimeter of the rectangle is 110. So you might have drawn this, right? Anybody draw a little box and say the whole thing, the perimeter is 110? What's the formula for perimeter? Yeah, so you have length, length, width, and width. So what's the perimeter equal to? How many W's do you see? 2W. And how many lengths do you see? 2. But what is the perimeter? You can sit down again. 110. 110. So what do we now know? 110 is equal to what? 2W, 2W plus 2L. How many equations do you see? Well, th those two, I'll circle them. How many equations do you see? Two of them. There, how many equations are in these, this box right here? <laughs> there are two equations in that box. How many variables are there? Two of them. When you have two equations and two variables, you should be able to solve it. We're going to pause right around. I'm sorry, I was focusing on what I was writing. Ah, okay. So let's look at these equations right here. What would you do to solve this system right here? Does anybody know what you would do? David. Um, yeah. Take, uh, L yeah. L yeah. Do you remember this word, everybody? Substitution. Remember that? You see this L? Where can we plug that into? The one right there. So what do we get? We get 110 is equal to 2W plus 2 times what? 2 times what? 1 plus 2W. Two. We took this right here. We took this right here and we plugged it in for L because it equals L. Now, how many equations do we have in green right there? One equation, one variable. Can we solve it? Yeah. 110 is equal to 2W plus 2 plus 4W. 110 is equal to 6W plus 2. What do I subtract from both sides? 2. 2. For those of you writing this down, please stop. What's 110 minus 2? 108. 108. And now what do you, oh, we can divide by 6 or we can divide, let's divide by 2 first. What's half of 108, Gabby? Mm-hmm. 3W. Now we divide by 3, so we know that W is equal to 54 over, what is that? Anybody remember? It's 20. Is it 20? No, 18. It's two, two less, 18, yeah. You're like, that's not right, Mr. Seaman. <laughs> 3 times 18 is 54. So now we know the width is 18. Are we done? No. no. We have to find, to answer this question, find the length and width. What do we know the length equals? Oh, look, what does it tell us right there? 1 plus 2w. 1 plus 2w. So l is equal to 1 plus 2w. So length is equal to 1 plus 2 times. So what is that equal to? 37. So we know the width is this and the length is that. There it is.
No, it's 39 because it's 2. Oh, 2 times yeah, 18 yeah, is 36, yeah, 36 yeah, plus yeah, 1 is 37. Yeah. Think. First thing, the first thing that's super important is read the problem. Understand it the best that you can. Read it. You read the problem. What is to be found? That's a really important question to ask. I've seen kids literally, I'll ask like, a boat is going this direction, what's the speed of the boat? And the answer is like, something makes no sense whatsoever. Like, a trillion miles an hour, you know? Like, check the reality and figure out what you're answering. So I'll, I'll ask questions like, <laughs> um, how many kids does Bob have? And the answer is like, he's 18 years old. <laughs> you know, like, if you actually looked at what it's asking and what you're answering, sometimes people do the right work, but then they give the totally the wrong answer based on what they worked on. So read it. This is, I think, one of the most important things. What's to be found is super important. So when we looked at our original problem up here, what were we looking for in this one? Length and width. We were looking for length and width. Those were the those were the things we were trying to find. Second, assign a variable. Do this. This is super important that you do it first. So I did it. I wrote L right next to length. We could say L is equal to the length. W is equal to the width. Sometimes you need more than one, but you have to have, you need to assign your variables. Then what do you do? Then after you've read and assigned your variables, then what do you do? Then you write the equation. Figure out what you're trying to find. Write, f d choose variables. They don't have to be L and W, but they're convenient. Then write an equation. What did I tell you about that big nasty fraction? What was the worst thing you could try to do? Do like everything at once. If you try to do everything at once on a word problem, you're going to make it so much harder. Sometimes it'll work. You'll get the right answer, but then you won't be able to explain it or give, get credit for it, right? Then solve. Then state your answer. Most people stop here. <laughs> when I say state your answer, the answer, what we could say would be like the width equals 18 and the length, and my handwriting is going down the tubes, is 37. That would be stating your answer. What's that last step that a lot of people don't do? Check. Check. I am not requiring you to do it every single time unless I tell you to, but if you have time, check your answer. Check it, check it, check it, check it, check it. Okay, so why don't you all label them? So we've read the equate, we've read it, now we need to assign variables. What variables did people use? How about V and L? Where V is what? What does V represent? Gabby. No, hold on, not the equation. What Label it. V is the number of strikeouts by Verlander, right? And what does L equal? Lincecum. He's got the crazy hair, right? Is that that guy, right? Oh, he did? So we have two variables right there. Now we write our equations. What do we know V plus L is? 530. And what else does it say? It says that V is more than 8 more. So V is equal to L plus 8. How many equations do we have? We're happy now because we have two equations and two variables. What do we plug in where, Megan? What do we plug in where on this one? Can anybody help her out? Robert, what is it? I took 8. I mean, I took 530 and I minus it by 8. Hold on. Hold. Yeah, I understand. No, but looking at these two equations, if you had these two equations, what would you do? If you had these two equations. Uh, Verdi, what would you do? Well, I use like the VL plus 530. And I put in what did you plug in? Oh, L plus 28 for V. 28? I mean, L plus 8. Look, this tells us that V equals L plus 8. So where can we plug that in? Sarah, where can we plug that in? Um, we can plug... V equals L plus 8. Where do we plug that in? Yeah, you take this, and where do you put it? Yeah. So what do we end up with? It's V plus L is equal to 530, right? But what do we plug into that blank? L plus 8. So how many L's do we have on the left? So you have 2L plus 8 is equal to 530. So 2L is equal to 522. So L is equal to what? 261. Are we done? No, because now we have the number of strikeouts for Lincecum. We need the number of strikeouts for. We know that V is equal to L plus 8. So what do we do, Robert? That's all we do. 
261 plus 8, which is going to be 269. So, so that's our V value right there, and that's our L value right there. So you're going to see lots of different questions like this. You're going to see lots of different questions like this. How about you move and find yourself next to somebody else and do this question right